All right, let's talk about Josh Allen. Got a little scary for a second there with the Bills, but they pull off the Thanksgiving miracle, are able to uh, beat the Detroit Lions. So good stuff for them. But let's talk about it all. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and everything in between uh, and how I feel about the uh, the Bills as a whole. Do I feel like the Bills should be worried now after they've had another kind of close game against a team that uh, you know they were heavily favored by? They were favored by double digits in this one. Well, yes and no. Let's get into it. Let's start off with this play. So you see, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup over the middle. Kind of a weird situation where the Lions are set up as though it's a cover two man. And I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but the safety who's lined up on the top of the screen is going to move a lot further in. I, I couldn't tell if that was by design or if that's just how it worked out, but that's what's going to happen. And so look at how when the play begins, that route I showed you on the screen, Isaiah McKenzie's, is kind of perfect, right? Because it could be a good angle, and it's going to where there's going to be no one else covering the deep part of that field. So that's where Josh Allen is going to look. It's going okay, right? There's a window. It's not a wide open window. This is not an easy throw to make. However, look at this just perfect throw from Josh Allen. McKenzie makes the grab, and they're able to pick up a touchdown there. So, you know, that's a big play, obviously. I mean, that was a four-point swing, basically, because you would have had to settle for a field goal. So being able to pull off something like that is just huge. And it's also always huge when these secondary receivers for Buffalo can come through, because when they can, it just makes this team so difficult to stop. Another thing that makes this team so difficult to stop is this play. I'm going to pause it to set up the play itself. It's a third down and two. So another situation where, listen, if they don't get it and they're still sitting here at third and two uh, at the three-yard line, maybe they go for it. I don't know. But the reality is you don't want to be in that situation. Uh, you think about like the point expectancy between getting this conversion and not getting this conversion. It's huge, obviously. So being able to convert on these plays are very big. And this is exactly what Josh Allen brings to the table with his legs. Because again, obviously his throwing is great, but his legs are definitely a very real aspect of his football game. Watch how Allen takes the snap and actually bobbles it for a second, but then he looks up, didn't love what he sees, so he's going to try and run. And a lot of quarterbacks in this situation aren't doing too much. However, Allen makes it look easy. I don't even understand how it was that easy for him to get into the end zone for a touchdown. So just incredible stuff from him. And again, he makes it look easy. And the fact that he can do this stuff consistently is part of why he still is in, in the MVP race, I think, in most people's minds. Now, we got to talk about the negatives because, again, Allen is someone who will put the ball in harm's way. This is going to be an interception. And I don't think it's a terrible one, but maybe one that he should have been a little bit more aware of. I mean, we can talk about it. It's a play action and you have a receiver who's going to run over the middle the idea is you get the play action to move kind of linebackers out of position and then you throw over top of them that's the idea here and again good play concept it's Stephon Diggs who's obviously very good at winning one-on-one -on -one matchups watch as Allen takes a snap and runs this play action he looks down the field and Diggs has won his matchup I mean if you can make the throw down the field this is going to be a completion and a touchdown I mean that's just the reality of the situation Allen wants to get the ball there quickly. The one area of concern is the linebackers who, you know, they're close. They definitely moved in. Have they moved all the way in? Maybe you could argue Allen should throw this one a little bit higher, but again, it's a tough throw. It is a tough throw because there are linebackers kind of all along that area. So you can't like time it in between a gap and coverage. There is no gap. They're all right next to each other. Allen makes this throw. I think it's probably the right call to make that throw, but a good defensive play to bat it up ends up getting intercepted. So kind of a tough one there from Allen. Another badly timed turnover. It feels like not only are these turnovers happening, it feels like they're happening in just the, the worst case scenario. Going over here, we should mention the offense definitely stalled for a bit. I mean, the offense did not uh, score. Usually their third quarter is like where they thrive. They didn't score in the third quarter. The only uh, points they put on the board there was from the safety. So it took them a minute to, to get going. They eventually did. And we'll talk about kind of the crazy ending in a second. But for now, uh, a lot of what went wrong was, again, a couple, just a couple of misplays, I thought, from the Bills, which, you know, those will clean up. I'm not concerned about that. I still did feel like, at times, the Lions were able to win the battle with the secondary receivers. Again, if if Diggs isn't thriving and Diggs isn't the guy running this offense, I still do feel like we have seen glimpses of teams being able to kind of beat the other guys. You know, Gabe Davis is good, Isaiah McKenzie can do things, but they're beatable compared to, like, Diggs, who really isn't. 
but watch how on this play begins. You're going to see that for McKenzie, he's just, you know, a little open. Like, I get trying to make this throw on a second down and 10, make the grab, pick up seven yards or so. However, you see the defensive back be able to reach in and knock the ball away. So very good defensive play there to not give up the uh, you know, separation. So what do you want to say? Do you want to say bad offense? Do you want to say good defense? You could argue either one. But the reality is, if guys aren't getting open, uh, the offense can stall. And that's what happened. But again, that's also football, right? You're not going to score on every drive unless you're playing the Patriots in a playoff game, apparently, for the Bills. Uh, typically, you're going to have some some things go wrong. You're going to have uh, you know, some highs and lows, and I th that's what happened during their lows, not concerning anything like that. The Lions defense has played better these past few weeks, but it's just more so that those are kind of the, the things. But let's talk about the the miracle play. Man, Stephon Diggs has a, you know, not the most biggest miracle catch he's had over his career, certainly, uh, but still a very big one, a very fun one. I saw people getting on the coaching for Dan Campbell on this one. It's a weird play because Dan Campbell always runs this play in the big spots. And the Lions, you know, I remember uh, during that game where Justin Tucker set the record for longest field goal uh, against the Lions, the way that that was set up on, I believe, a fourth and 20 was against this play concept. And then if my memory serves me, it was the same play concept against the Vikings a week later that uh, cost them another game. Well, they're doing it again here. And I actually don't hate the play concept, but it's certainly not working for the Lions. The way this play works is it's a cover three man play is kind of the way to look at it. Worse, I guess maybe the better way to look at it would be a cover two man, but I just have an extra player dropping back in the coverage. So three man rush, but you also still have, you know, someone covering every single receiver and then you have plenty of players deep. So the idea is anything deep is going to be in the double coverage, anything shallow, you still have someone covering them because again, 23 seconds left, that is time to try something. If not a field goal, at least get to midfield and try a Hail Mary. However, when this play begins, you're going to see Diggs get the inside leverage and really blow by his assigned man. And just no lion who's further deep picked this up quick enough. I think they were playing too far off. I do. That's my biggest nitpick here is you don't have to play that far off. I think a lot of times people just say, the odds of a play like this happening are so slim. Just play your typical defense because it almost never happens in those situations. You see Diggs has a window to make this catch here. Great throw from Allen and Diggs does in fact make the grab. Really good throw by, from Allen to get the ball there that quickly. That was kind of the biggest thing from Allen. Timing it up perfectly, getting the ball there exactly when he had to, and also just great well-ran route by Diggs to be able to make stuff like that happen. And so because of kind of those two one-two punch type things. That's how they were able to pull this one out here. Again, maybe you want to sit here and say that the Bills, if you're trying to be a Super Bowl contender, don't have it come down to the final second against the Lions. I disagree. A, it's Thursday night football. Weird things happen on Thursday. Uh, you know, actually, it's, it's not even Thursday night. You don't even get that extra half day. It's Thursday afternoon football. Not to mention, the Lions, of course, have been playing much better football as of late, so you have that aspect. And, like, it's the NFL. Things are going to happen. You're not just going to blow out every single team that you have a better record than every single week. Like, that's the way it works. The goal is to win as many football games as possible. And for the Bills, they're certainly still in a spot where they have a chance to get the one seed. I mean, they're a game back, and they have the tiebreaker over the Chiefs right now. So the one seed is absolutely still, you know, up for grabs at this point. They just need the Chiefs lost to get there. So would have been a tough loss had they lost this one. And also I should mention, uh, you know, the Ravens and Titans have uh, are seven and three, and so are the Dolphins. So uh, a lot of tiebreakers today are to go with. I'm sure that one of those has the tiebreaker over the Bills. I know the Dolphins do, but they at least have a chance at the one seed. They're fighting for it down the stretch with another six games left on the schedule. And this was a big win if they're trying to get there. So at least that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.